I've said it many times, I know I would change my ways, I know for sure When all the crows decide to meet They settle down beneath my feet I've got it right and I got it wrong But I learned my lesson hanging on Come sit here with me by the fire And let it go for a little while So be here as the night starts falling Let my fingers walk over your head We got nothing to be scared of I'd rather be with you than by myself Not always in your head Sean Leckie, uh, I am a landscape astrophotographer, I guess you could put it into one. Uh, I've been a Florida-based photographer for about seven years now, technically, uh, but soon to be a Arizona-based landscape photographer and, you know, killing it over there, getting great shots and just living my life out there with my, my wife and my dogs and my cats. So we're doing this interview for one because something that you brought up that you would like to do, but it's my last time that I'm really going to see you. I last mean, time you'll be here. Yeah, yeah, basically, basically last time I'll be at least in this apartment, at least in this area of Florida. So where are you going now? Arizona. So I'll be living in the Phoenix area in Arizona. Um, hopefully for a, a while, maybe, maybe somewhere else in that area, maybe going to Utah or going into California, maybe not California. It's too expensive there it's too expensive uh maybe Colorado who knows yeah but yeah no going out to Arizona to try it out there see how things go I like moving out there yeah so new experiences um really when it comes down to it just kind of having a a new kind of take on life I guess you can say because like I I grew up in Ohio um, that was where I was for 10 years of my life. You know, I was born in Ohio, lived there till I was 10 years old, and then I moved down to Florida. And, you know, when I was up there, like, you know, not everything was, you know, glitz and glamour, you know, family reasons and stuff like that. But, you know, the memories that I do have up there that were good, were good. And I enjoyed kind of the lifestyle I had or the lifestyle that was kind of available there. It wasn't like mountains. It wasn't, you know, sand dunes or anything of that nature. I mean, Ohio itself is not really the most picturesque place if you really think about it. But I had a lot of fun when I was there because I was able to camp. You know, you had the four seasons. It wasn't just, you know, flat, hot, muggy, one or two days of cold and, you know, back to summer. But also too, it's just, I'm really excited just to have a new like kind of chance on life. Like, I mean, you know, have more of the landscape that I want to be in so that way I can camp. I can take, you know, photos of mountains and, you know, drive, know an hour or so drive two hours three hours four hours six hours and be almost in a totally different landscape you know i drive an hour you know north in where i'm gonna be living i'm in an area that's snowing i mean i had to drive at least another two states or so to get some snow here so like there's that like having like the ability to just have like a different type of lifestyle is really what i'm really looking forward to the most of and hoping that something you know career-wise comes out of it you know I don't know, I'm gonna try my best. See, hopefully things come out that way, but we won't know until, we, until it happens, until at least I try and put the work in. So landscape photography kind of just came out of nowhere. I started with portrait photography, did that for a while, tried it out, liked it for like a month, hated it after two weeks. Uh, it was just a lot, there was a lot of things, a lot of variables, I just didn't really like the variables that were in there. So landscape photography was the next best thing for me and started it, followed through with it. And it's a lifestyle right now. It's life, it's all I do, it's all I think about. But camera choice, uh, I mean, I'm a sucker for anything Fuji, really. Uh, when it comes down to, I've, I've shot a lot of different brands, Canon, Nikon, Sony, landed on Fuji Film. Uh, right now I'm using a Fuji Film X-T3. 
Uh, go-to lens for anything landscape wise is gonna be a 10 to 24 f4. And then if I need a little bit extra kick, I do a one, I use a 100 to 400, uh, which is a variable f-stop. So and that gives me a little bit more extra control on the layers and stuff like that. Just in general. Okay, uh, I mean, that's still kind of a tough question because I've taken probably a lot of photos, but maybe like out of those, a lot of photos, maybe a handful have actually been like some of my favorites. But, ah, oh, man, it's it's kind of hard because I've had a lot of like really good like like ties to some of the photos that I've taken, like especially going out and shooting with you. But um, I recently just took a photo of a, of a bird. I don't even know what kind of bird it is. It's some sort of like Florida bird. It's like Florida's mascot, at least I feel like it is. You see them everywhere. But it was so cool because majority of wildlife photography, I feel like it's kind of hard because you have to try to find a way to not in, be intrusive to the animal's environment, but yet still try to be as close as possible. It's like a, it's a, it's like a dance almost. And I was fortunate enough that probably these birds have had a lot of interaction with humans to where they weren't afraid of me. So I was actually able to have them be really close to me without scaring them or anything of that nature. But I just got really low. I isolated this one bird. I had crazy depth of field going on in the foreground and the background. So I just, it almost looks like, almost like fine art, like, like photography almost. Uh, that's one of my favorite ones that I've taken recently. Yeah, and pop right here. <laughs> right there, yeah. Other than that, probably one of my other favorite photos was actually taken on my my honeymoon when I got married up in Oregon. And we were at the Painted Hills in Oregon. And there's a lot of reasons why it's my, one of my favorite photos, which is the the drive to the Painted Hills, but then also to like just I just love the way it looks because again, it looks like fine art. Like in my opinion, at least, like it's something that I would be gladly to hang up in someone's home or I would hang up in my office or something like that. So there is a, this is really cool shot, very isolated shot that I have. It doesn't really show like the grand landscape. It just really shows just kind of layers and like the different colors and textures of this particular spot in Oregon, the Painted Hills. And I just love the way it looks because the way I framed it, the way I edited it, it just looks amazing, at least in my opinion. Yeah, 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 yeah. Five layer, five layer bean dip. That's that's my favorite. That's one of my favorite photos that I've taken. That's kind of crazy. You remember that that one? Yeah, I love that. One. <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, but yeah, that's that has to be one of them. But kind of little tangent on the other side over here. The drive to that like area. I mean, I've never been to Oregon before. That was my first time ever being to Oregon, and I was using Google Maps, and we were coming from, I think it was the Mount Hood area up in Oregon, so like Hood River, and you know, doing the drive and everything like that. And when we got to a certain portion of our drive, you know, my GPS was like, oh, would you like to take this route instead of the other route? And they're like, oh, this is the scenic route. I'm like, yeah, why not? Like, I don't know when the next time I'm gonna be up here, let's take the scenic route. So it takes us through this area in Oregon called the Passage Through Time. So it's really cool. It's like, it almost looks like lava rock and it's just kind of crazy. It literally looks like we're in a different time you have no cell service, you can't call anyone. Like if you, if you get stuck, you kind of screwed, kind of deal. <laughs> so there's that, which was really dope. I got a cool, I got a pretty cool photo uh, in that area as well. Not one of my favorites, but it's a cool photo. And you know, we keep going past, we keep driving through, and then we finally get to an area that like the, the pavement's gone, there's no pavement. And we're in a rented Nissan Rogue. No, no, I'm sorry, a Juke. We're in a, a rented Nissan Juke. And we're driving and you know, it's getting, you know, dirt roads. I'm like, okay, whatever, you know, just keep doing my thing. GPS is saying, just keep continuing. I'm like. Google Maps telling me to go this way, I gotta go. So, you know, I'm driving and, you know, my wife, Katie, is sitting in the passenger seat and she's like, where, where are we going? I'm like, uh, being hills? <laughs> like, I don't know. So we keep driving and then it gets to the point where like, we're like, like on gravel dirt roads. Like it's, it's, it doesn't really look like we're supposed to be there. It doesn't look like we're supposed to be driving on these roads. We keep doing a thing and we start going up hills and there's no guardrails or anything like that. And my wife's freaking out and you know, Katie's just, like, I, like Sean, be, be careful, be slow, be slow, be slow, you know, don't drive too fast. And you know, just keep going. I'm not, not I don't have a care in the world. I'm so like, oh, shit, it's crazy looking. Like, I'm like, oh, this is amazing. You know, she's over here freaking out. And then we finally get to like the entrance of the Painted Hills after I think like a 30 minute drive through like unpaved road, you know, going slow too. Cause there's like, it's bumpy is, you know, it, it's very, very bumpy. So we finally get there and we see like an actual paved road, which was probably the road that we should have taken that wasn't the scenic route to be on the safer side, but you know, hey, 
who knows. And that's one reason why it's also one of my favorites is I have a good story behind it. You know, it's kind of like why I liked, you know, the photographs that we captured just because there's a story behind it. It's not just like, oh, I saw that on social media. I liked it, you know, like it was, it was something more than just like, oh, I like the way this looks, let me go photograph it. You know, I actually have meaning behind it. And that's one of the reasons why it's one of my favorites. Will those be your my top favorites? Top, yeah, those be your top two. At the moment, yes. Yeah. At the moment, yes. Like, I mean, I love photographing the Milky Way and stuff like that. And like, I really enjoy some of the photos that I got when I was in Arizona on vacation. But honestly, like, I think just because for one, it was one of like my first like experiences doing like wildlife photography and I really enjoyed how it came out and just kind of like the rush of it. And that photo just because the story behind it, honestly, man. Well, uh, a few things actually, a few big things. Um, so, I mean, the first thing, I mean, cause we did the, we went to go shoot the stars first before yeah. date night, right? Yeah. Before okay, date. before date night, okay. The coolest thing was just like when, when you got out there, like you were just like blown about how many stars there were. And I was like, all right, just wait. Yeah. Like, I was just like, just wait, because we're going to go somewhere that's even darker, yeah. you know? And it was just a lot of fun because, you know, I still have that phone on my, on my, or, I'm sorry, I still have the picture on my phone that you took and that you printed out and stuff like that. And I constantly get asked all the time, I was like, is that you? Like, me, like, talking about me in the picture, like, because I know you do Astro. I'm like, no, 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 that's my homie. Yeah. Like, my homie took this picture. I'm like, no shit, really? And I'm like, yeah, totally. Like, we went out, we just had a blast. Yeah, we were, we were out there for maybe like an hour and a half, two hours, something like that, just shooting the shit, having a good time. I have that poster hanging. Oh, you do? Room. You do? Yeah, Dope, man. Room, so like whenever someone comes in my room, they're like, who is that? Is that you? I'm like, no, that's my homie. <laughs> <laughs> there would be no way I would have gotten that photo with Doc. I'm like, yeah, man. That's the sole reason that we were able to even do something like that. You know, so. And people love that photo too. Every Everyone I've shown it to, everyone that's seen it at work for one, because it's still there, they're like, oh, it's like, dude, it's like, that's awesome. Because like, there's that like, eerie feeling, there's that mysterious feeling. You have, you know, the civilization aspect of it because you see the power line, you see the road, but yet you also get like the fog rolling in, the stars and everything like that. And it's just beautifully edited as well. So it just, it's just a stunning photo. If you guys don't know what the photo <laughs> is that we're talking about, we'll pop it up right in screen. Somewhere, right? somewhere in here. Right there, <laughs> yeah, we'll pop it up. All right, so that one was the first one definitely. But honestly, when, you were talking about your first short film for, for school, for class, yeah. that we had to do date night. That one was like a totally like different kind of experience for me because first time ever even doing anything to that caliber. I mean, the most, I mean, I've ever done any kind of film was maybe back in high school. Yeah, high school with, you know, a, a group of buddies that we, like, that kind of got me into photography and stuff like that. And, you know, it was DIY the whole entire way. like. Our stabilizer was literally a block of wood, a, a, a pipe, and some weights, bro. Like that's what it was. You know, I, we went to we went to Home Depot and we bought everything, we put it together, and that was what it was. You know, our lights were DIY to the extreme. So it was it was interesting because like it was eye opening on a different level because I've always done just photography for the most part. I've never really ventured too far into videography or cinematography like myself. So. Seeing that side of the, the industry, kind of getting the experience of doing that, like which was totally new, working with X amount of people versus being one or two people, it was interesting, it was very eye-opening, but it also too, the, the, the thing that really made me kind of like, like think about it, like what was going on was the fact that it was like, I would have never done something like this, for one, unless you, you know, introduced it to me, or I don't think I would have ever done anything like that. So it was just kind of like those things that it put me out of my comfort zone, but it also gave me another avenue of something that I, I actually really enjoyed. I enjoyed doing it, it was fun. I may have not known what the hell I was doing for a majority of it, but it was a learning process. And with those two things, like just those two incidents for an example, the biggest thing that I learned from the first night, like the first, like going out to shoot the stars was just go, just have fun. Yeah. Like, like it doesn't matter if, you have an agenda, but the experience was still great. Like, I mean, I didn't get to see the Milky Way that night. We didn't get to see the Milky Way, but we still had a great time, yeah. you know? Doing date night, I had no idea what I was doing, but 
I enjoyed every minute that we were doing it, even from the planning, from the sitting down with you know the, the guys and going over the score, talking about the script, talking about the camera, what we were doing that way, and then meeting everyone that was there, the people that I've never known from your school. It was just, it was a blast, it really was. I mean, going into the other runs, going to an even darker area, that was a blast. I mean, really was. I mean, it was a two hour drive there, two hour drive back. You fell asleep halfway on the, on the, on the way back. No lie. Man, I was talking to him mid-sentence and like, I, I paused. Like, I, I paused. And I looked over, passed out. Passed out. And I'm like, okay, I'm like, okay. And I'm, meanwhile, I'm over here going into a, a, an eight hour work shift, no sleep. Nothing like that. Finally get home. I'm like, okay, I gotta go. Like, I gotta sleep. <laughs> I gotta pass out. The time and the experience that I've spent with people here, that's what I'm gonna miss the most. Like, I can't say landscape, can't say the actual state, can't say the beaches, can't say the theme parks. But, you know, the people that I've met, the, the time that I spent with those people, learning from them, having fun, just... Experiences. Yeah, experiences, honestly. And probably it sounds really cliche, I'm sure that's what a lot of people would say about where they're moving from. But honestly, like that's, like even if it was like a crazy, amazing state, you know, like maybe like a dream state if I could ever live in one was maybe like Utah, like like Washington or like Oregon. Like even though I would like really hate leaving somewhere like that, it's a move to like maybe somewhere that's not as versatile when it comes down to like what you can see there. But honestly, I would be more upset about leaving the experiences behind. But I mean, every experience is in the past though. So, I mean, you're always leaving it behind and you're always making new ones.